Okay guys, so stay tuned. I'm going to go over the basics of um, the 600 film cameras from Polaroid. The different kinds a little bit and mainly your maintenance and how to maintain them and get really good pictures from them. So stay tuned. Okay, so here's one of my favorite of my Polaroid 600s is the uh, Sun 660. Has autofocus on it and um, it takes really good photos and it has that nice vintage look to it. Um, and now what I have here is the one step close up, which takes are great for um, selfies or you know portrait photos. Really cool. I also have um, the impulse autofocus, and it takes really good photos too. And then I also have the one step flash, which also has the close up portrait um, lens there too. So the main thing I wanted to go over just mainly your maintenance and how to care for them and what you need to do. Um, the most important thing to any um, Polaroid camera is keeping your rollers clean. Um, that's going to be the number one cause of any kind of um, problems with your film. So like on most Polaroid cameras, you always have a release latch right here. You push up and it releases your door. I have no film in here for right now, but here's your rollers. On the vintage cameras, the rollers are free moving. As you can see, I can move with my finger. And the biggest thing you can do, the best thing you can do, I mean, is either I like to use alcohol and some uh, Q-tips, or the thing I primarily use is these alcohol wipes, rubbing alcohol wipes. You can buy at your uh, local drugstore. And, um, oops, didn't mean to drop that. So let's get one out here. And they're not wet at all, they're just damp. That's what I like about these. So you'll open back up your little door here and just, your rollers here, I like to use this gear. Just lay it on the rollers and turn that gear and just kind of go across slowly. Just like that. And you can even wipe across it and just, you know, roll, wipe, roll, wipe, wipe. <laughs> it's a little different roll and wipe back and forth and then there's also another roller in there so you got two here so you need to make sure you're trying to get both at the same time that's why i kind of like um these rags better these um rubbing alcohol wipes better because you can get both rollers at the same time so it's a little quicker than using the q-tips but or you can just use water on the q-tips you don't want to use a harsh um if you don't like the smell of alcohol or whatever uh, water will be just fine i also like to um just after I get done doing it, you know, make sure they're good and dry and look at them real good. Make sure there's no residue still left on them. And um, remove any kind of like maybe a little lint builds up from these. That does happen. You just make sure you get it all clean. Because that's the number one cause of film problems is your rollers have just a minute amount. I mean, just a littlest amount. Well, what happens that when the chemical is being spread across the image, it it's not done evenly. There's like pressure points or whatever. That's what's going to damage the um the emulsion um film in there which is what the image is developed onto so that's what causes a lot of the issues so that's the single most important thing i feel like you can always do to keep your camera in good condition um like i said also to use a little can of air i'd use caution though because sometimes that can of air can squirt out that white um residue on it so be use caution but you can use the can of air in here to keep the mirror clear i just blow in there sometimes um, another thing, just keep your lenses clean and clear, and I always keep this cleaned off too. So this is, you know, those are just very basic things of them. Um, they're all the same when it comes to Polaroid, and that's what's really cool. You know, push up again on that one, releases it, same deal. Rollers are free here, same thing, just wipe across them. Um, what's really cool about this one, though, I'll go over a little more features, is it has that extra lens that it puts across here. And that, you know, so you can get closer. And it even tells you here how close you can get. And on that one, you can get two to four feet. And when it's on infinity, you, uh, as close as you can get is four feet to infinity. And just to get it back, you just push in on that button and it shoots back across there. As you notice over here on your viewfinder, when you bring that lens over, it has a little 
oval in there. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you want to put that person's face within that oval. Don't go above, you know, outside the parameter of oval, but, you know, make sure their face or whatever you did in a portrait is in that. Uh, on selfies, pretty much the, your arm length, if you can stretch your arm out as, you know, as far away as possible, that's going to get you still a sharp image. It's probably about the limits, but it will. Um, now, the Impulse camera is a little different. This was a classic late 80s, early 90s camera. Um, this one has the autofocus uh, feature on it, sonar technology. Um, these are just a tad bit different. Here's still your adjuster for your um, exposure, though. Light here, darker there. Um, this is your light sensor here. And there's your viewfinder hole. This one, though, has a timer on it, which is kind of cool because you do have a tripod mount on the back or bottom here. Um, but it's just the boxy, you know, square look of the classic, you know, late, late 80s, early 90s look. I love it. Um, to turn this camera on, though, you, you pop up your flash. And that opens up the lens and your flash, and then it's charged. When it's red, it means your thing's still charging. When it's green, it's ready to go. Here's your counter window, as all Polaroids have on them. Um, but this camera is really cool. I just like the look of it. Same deal. Right now there is film in there, but you are okay to open them with film still in them. Um, just push up. It rolls down, and there's your film pack. And all that. And there's your rollers too, which I've already cleaned those. So... And then the Polaroid one step flash here, same principle as really the close up. They just this is a much earlier model. And what I do with this camera, since it's, it's distinctive because it has the red line here and it's an older model, I use this one for my black and white only film. You have your exposure adjuster here, and it has your lens, you know, thing here, it goes across. So this is great too for black. That's why I use my black and white. So I can either do close ups of black and white or far away. And exact same principle push up releases your door and it opens so next we'll show you how a little bit how to load film and what to expect of that all right so loading film so I hear my my black and white 600 film and their film is amazing black and white it's very good um, to open it you just do this there's a piece of foil here you just peel it open And again, you always get a little packet telling you how, you know, to take take good shots. You know, some of the tips and tricks of the film. And then, so here's your film pack. And like I said, since it's a 600 film, you're going to have battery terminals right here. And all you do is you, you don't have to have this open either. I just have it open for, you know, so you can see what the camera looks like. But this can be shut. You just push up on your release button here, and your front comes open. And also, too, they always have a sticker telling you, you know, the film, too. Because this is a vintage camera. You have to use the 600 film, not the I-Type. And all you do is slide it in. Like that. Shut your lid. And it should automatically eject your dark slide and the camera's ready now here it's showing red because it's still loading up the flash and just went to green this is a really cool camera I like it too and this is when I got it at my local um, Goodwill for four dollars so Goodwill's a great place to go look for cameras you want to get into Polaroids um, but the cameras you know this is my black and white and how I like it. I always distinguish this because it has the red mark on it and I have taken some photos you know, already with this camera, and here's one of them. Like I said, their black and white photos are very good. They have great tones in it. Um, it has that nice vintage look to it. I mean, it's just really good. Um, that's my, my cat, if you don't know. But I really like their black and white films. It develops much faster, too, than color. And I've had, you know, it's just always great, great outcomes with the black and white. Um, the other camera I kind of wanted to really touch base on, I've not really seen many videos of this one, is the Impulse. Um, 
I got this one on eBay for just, you know, very cheap, like $15, something like that. Um, eBay's another great place to find cheap Polaroid cameras. And here was um, the very first photo I took with it. And I, this is my husband. But if you look here, you got that there and a little one over here. That is the rollers were not clean completely. So I had to, you know, after I took this one photo, I thought I cleaned them well, but I obviously must have missed something because that's usually what that happens. Um, or it could have been from the dark slide scraping that one and having, you know, putting, putting too much pressure on that emulsion uh, layer there. Don't know. So I took them out, redid it. So here was the second photo I took with it. This is downtown city I live in. And this one much better. It did have one blemish right there, but it's much better. You know, it's not near what's in the first one. Then here was the second photo of our famous uh, Indiana theater. And this one has no blemishes whatsoever. It came out perfectly. So this camera takes really good photos. Uh, so far, I've not had really no Polaroid that I've bought in vintage wise that was, you know, a bad camera. Uh, they're very robust. They, they stand up to time. Um, they're very beefy. Um, so, but they, you know, I just love taking the photos. You can't mimic the look of a Polaroid without a Polaroid. <laughs> yes, Instax. I love Instax cameras. Don't get me wrong. I think they're great. Um, they are much cheaper to operate than Polaroid. And so if you'd like instant photography, but you don't, you're on a budget, those are great cameras too. And I even own a few of them and I have, I love them. But I'm more of, I just, when I was growing up, that's what I had was a Polaroid. So I just, that's the reason why I stick with it for the most part. But I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. I'm just giving you some tips and tricks on how to maintain your um, 600 cameras. Um, Polaroid, check out my description because I have a link to their website. It is always best to buy the films directly from them because the film needs to be handled a certain way and they're, you know, of course, coming straight from the factory. They uh, store it properly and it's the freshest film you can buy because uh, this film does have chemicals in it. So the fresher the film, the more, you know, the better it's going to turn out. So don't forget to check the description. If you like this video, hit the like button and share it across your um, platforms, uh, social medias and all that. And I appreciate it. See you guys in the next video. Bye.